Let's imagine we have the following scenario. We have a tiny little game which is appropriate for a 5 minute video. In this game we have a cube which the player can rotate or change its color. And that's basically it. Obviously in order to interact with the cube we need to provide some user interface to the player. And that is the actual topic of this video because there is an old way to do this and a new way. For the old way we would have to go into a hierarchy, start adding some UI elements to the canvas, reposition them and do stuff like that. Now while that works and was used by thousands of Unity developers over the last years, we might ask some questions here. For example, why is our UI living in the same space as our cube? Or why are all of our UI elements attached to particular game objects? Are those things really necessary or helpful? For most use cases the answer is no. Fortunately for us there is now a new way to solve the same problem. Introducing UI Toolkit. So let's remove our canvas and see what else we can do. To start working with UI Toolkit all we have to do is open the new UI editor which is called UI Builder. UI Toolkit provides a nice separation of concerns into three parts. The first part is our layout which we save as UXML files. Let's call this one Cube Game UI. We can now arrange our basic layout for a simple HUD, although HUD is a pretty big name here for something pretty simple. We need one container for the whole screen and one for our actual buttons at the bottom. We are setting all those properties in the inspector, but they are all saved into the UXML file which we created before. Notice how we are not touching our actual game scene at all. The UI work is detached entirely from our game logic and we could reuse this UI in any game we would like to. For our game we need three buttons. And this brings us to the second component of UI Toolkit which is styling. Now obviously we could set all the properties we want for each button in the inspector. But one rule in programming is don't repeat yourself. UI Toolkit allows us to isolate and reuse our styling with style sheets which are saved as USS files. What this allows us to do is to create a class for our button but set the properties on the class and not a particular button. Then all that's left to do is to add the class to the other buttons and they all look the same. Finally let's give them an appropriate text and we are done with our layout. So far our game and our UI are entirely isolated and don't know about each other. What we now need is one small piece to actually connect them this is a component called UI document. In here we just choose our layout file and our UI is visible. The third and final component of UI Toolkit is functionality or behavior. And this is done in C -sharp scripts just as all of our other coding. So let's create one here and call it UI. Jump into the script. We want to use the UI elements namespace in order to interact with our UI toolkit components. We then need access to a cube controller which is surprisingly allowing us to control the cube. Now in on enable we need a reference to the root element of our UI because from it we have access to all the other elements. That way we can now get references to our three buttons but that only works if we gave them the appropriate names. And finally let's now do what we are actually here for. Give the buttons some functionality. For that we can access the clicked event on the buttons and hook up the appropriate function from the cube controller. 
Let's go back to Unity, attach the script, get an instance of the cube controller, and our UI is fully functional. Notice again how our work on the UI and the game were entirely separated. And notice how most of the UI work was done without touching any code. Particularly on large projects, this workflow can help a lot in keeping the project clean and have a smooth cooperation with your designers. This was UI Toolkit in 5 minutes. Thank you for watching and see you next time.